Check all the tools from the shoe box and make sure you have the following. Stiletto heel mold, sole cutter, drying rack, and the shoe last former. These are four of the tools that you need to make your shoe. The written instructions and pattern kit are also included. It is important to wash all the molds and dry them thoroughly before using. To make the heel, apply a thin layer of vegetable shortening on the inside surface of the mold to prevent your sugar dough from sticking. Condition a piece of sugar dough by kneading it with the heel of your hand until no visible cracks are seen on the edges of the dough. Form an elongated teardrop by rolling the dough back and forth between your hands or on the table while making sure that the tapered end is thin enough to fit in the narrow end of the mold. Close the mold and push the dough in to make sure that all the spaces of the mold is filled with the sugar dough. Take a blunt knife or a painter's spatula and trim all the excess on the top. Occasionally grease the spatula to prevent the dough from sticking. Push the remaining dough and spread with your thumbs to make sure that the indentations on top are filled with a gum paste. Trim any remaining gum paste with a spatula and make sure that the top of the heel is straight and smooth. Open the heel mold and trim all the excess dough that remains between the lid and the body of the mold using a lightly greased spatula. Push the gum paste dough back and make sure that the full length of the heel mold is filled with a dough. The height of the heel is very important because it is compatible with the height of the drying rack. If you fail to make sure that the dough fills the mold all the way to the end, your heel may come out shorter than the drying rack and your sole will not be shaped properly while it dries. Leave the heel in the mold for at least 20 minutes to dry the surface of the gum paste. You may leave the heel in the mold for up to two hours at most, but no longer because it would be difficult to pry out. If the heel becomes too stiff while in the mold, it may crack while you try to take it out. Drying the heel shorter than 20 minutes may result to a very limp dough and may bend back or forward while it dries upside down. Using a nonstick rolling pin, roll a thick piece of gum paste flat on the nonstick board no thinner than an eighth of an inch. Make sure that the length is a bit bigger than your sole cutter. The heel should be completely dry before proceeding to this step. A heel that have been drying for 24 to 48 hours would be the most ideal to use. Cut the sole shape using the sole cutter in the tool set. Use your rolling pin to make sure that you have applied uniform pressure throughout the cutter. 
Gently shake the cutter to separate the sides and take off all the excess dough. Run the back of your fingernail on the side to smooth out any fuzzy dough residue. Brush a small amount of gum glue on the flat surface of your heel and press it firmly on the end of the sole. Use your nonstick rolling pin to fold in the side of the sole towards the heel to smooth out the edges and to marry the two parts together. Now is the time to use the drying rack. The drying rack is used upright with a narrow end sits flat on the board and not the wide side. Place the assembly on the drying rack to dry the sole in shape. You may place this on a piece of styrofoam so that the underside of the sole dries at the same time with the whole assembly. You also want to make sure that the heel is straight and upright and not leaning one way or another. This assembly requires a full day to dry to prevent the sole from breaking while you add all the other parts of the shoe, especially the details that you will put on top. I sometimes leave the drying rack to support the sole even after it dries because it's very easy to forget not to put too much pressure on it. I cut the pattern number 2 from the pattern kit included in the shoe tools under the silver evening shoe. This shape will mimic the padding on my sole. The padding will be placed on top of the sole and not only will it serve as a decorative piece on my shoe, it will also add some support to the sole. You may use a textured rolling pin or textured mat to put some details to it, but at this time I will use it plain. I will trace the shape and cut it at the same time using my wheel cutting tool. I roll the piece of gum paste a bit thinner than my sole and larger than the pattern that I will use. Using a stitching wheel, trace along the side of the padding. This will give your shoe some realistic stitching details. Moisten the underside of the gum paste, making sure that it's sticky but not too wet. Place it on the dried sole and leave this piece for another 2 hours to dry before adding any other details to the shoe. This whole assembly can be made way in advance. In a cake bakery setting, I will suggest for the decorator to make several of this assembly in different colors of gum paste ahead of time. This way, when you get an order for a cake that requires a shoe decoration, the process will be much shorter because the drying time is a huge factor in making a shoe. If the heel and the sole assembly is ready and dry, Adding other details to the shoe will only take about 15 to 20 minutes and a day to dry them all, making the assembly much shorter. Once the padding is dry and ready, place the shoe last former on top of the sole. The shoe last former is used tilted, leaning on the sole while the front tips of the sole and the former aligns. The former is supposed to be used this way so that the ankle strap can be anchored to it. Do not use the former flat on the sole as this will not form the shoe detail correctly. For the style of shoe that I am making, I cut the number 10 pattern detail from the pattern kit and this will be placed at the back end of the shoe where the ankle strap will be attached later on. I also cut number 6 and number 4 in pattern details and traced it on a piece of gum paste. I will do the same step for the bell shape pattern number 10. Once I traced all the details, I will brush some gum glue on the base of the bell shaped piece to make it sticky. I will then attach it on the back end of the shoe right above the heel, making sure that it's straight, positioned in the middle, and placed upright. I will then use the side of my nonstick rolling pin to fold the gum paste to smoothen the edges and marry the two components. Place the shoe last former into position.
If it slides down, use a piece of foil or paper towel to prop it up. Add stitching details along the side of the two strips of gum paste that will be attached to the front end of the shoe. Moisten the contact points of the strips with the gum glue. Place the first strip into position and add pressure on both ends of the strip to make sure that it's attached to the sole. Place the second strip right above the first. Only the sides of these strips will anchor it to the shoe, so make sure that it's completely stuck to the side of the sole before drying completely. Cut two straight strips of gum paste about an inch in width. These are just straight strips of gum paste about 8 inches in length and is not in the pattern kit. Add stitching details on both sides. Moisten the contact points of one of the strips and attach right above the second strap as shown. Completely moisten the back side of the other strip with gum glue and attach it to the middle of all the strap extending to the top of the former. Cut the excess gum paste with the help of a pellet knife depending on how high you want to position your ankle strap. And leave it to dry for a couple of hours. Once the assembly is dry, lift the shoe former to make sure that the sugar dough is not stuck to it. Cut another piece of gum paste strip about an inch in width and 12 inches in length for the ankle strap. The length of the strip should be a bit longer than what you need and add stitching details on both sides. Moisten the contact points with gum glue wherever the strip will be positioned to make sure that the gum paste will stick. Wrap the strip around the shoe with the two ends meeting at the back of the shoe. Cut off any excess gum paste using a palette knife. The seam at the back end of the shoe will be hidden with another detail later. Before the ankle strap completely dries, be sure to remove the shoe last former while the gum paste still gives. Failing to remove it before the gum paste completely dries may result to breaking the strap so it's important not to forget this step. Cut another piece of gum paste about 1 inch in width and 2 inches in length. Add stitching details on both sides and moisten both ends with gum glue. Attach the strip by folding the end to hide the seam on the back side of the shoe. Use a knitting tool to put pressure on the contact points to make sure that it's completely attached to the shoe. To make the end strap and buckle, cut a piece of gum paste about 2 inches in length and an inch in width and add stitching details on both sides. Cut one end of the strip at a diagonal and make the other rounded in shape as shown. Use a knitting tool to indent holes on the strip and attach it on the side of the shoe with gum glue. Since the shoe does not have a right or a left slope, your buckle assembly should be placed whichever side will be displayed on your cake. For the buckle, roll a small piece of sugar dough between the palms of your hands so that the shape is tapered on both ends and the length should be about 2 inches. Bend the tapered log into a C shape. Use the tip of a kneading tool to make an indentation on the center of the buckle. Place a short tapered log on top of the indentation to mimic a buckle stopper. Attach the buckle assembly in place using gum glue. And you have your finished shoe. This shoe can be airbrushed with your choice of color. 
You may also add personalized details such as cake blinks or embellishments made of gum paste fashioned from a silicone mold. The only limit in decorating is your imagination.